my YouTube Troy at the full setup here back for another video today and today I have an unboxing and a quick overview of you for you um, of my new power supply um, now I've needed a new power supply for a while just because I've got you know loads of systems building all the time and I'm sort of bouncing around between each other so I've got to start buying all the boring bits when all I want to buy is all the fun bits um, as you can see one of my new fun bits is I've got a uh, Corsair Carbide 600C got some uh, paint work coming for that as well over the next week so if you want to see that please subscribe but yeah power supply um, didn't want to spend too much money but obviously didn't want to spend hardly any money so it blows up um, but I sort of had a few requirements so originally the budget was like no more than probably £75 with delivery um, and I also wanted modular um, now when it came to modular I knew I was probably going to get semi modular um, but then I had my other little thing as well like um, I sort of quoted on last year when I did some uh, modular PSU uh, unboxings was that um, I don't like seeing all the coloured cable and I don't really want braided extensions either I'm not a big fan of braided cable so I need all flat black cables semi modular power supply under 75 pounds and then the last thing was wattage um, what wattage did I want now to be fair with all the new graphics cards that we've got coming out with Polaris and Pascal you know 500 watt power supplies have just sort of um, pretty all right now aren't they if you're not going to go crossfire SLR you can still have quite a high end graphics card but I thought do you know what maybe in the future um, I have been looking at as well with the next build maybe going for a crossfire setup so I decided I needed a bit more but I still don't need as much as we would need a year ago so what I have gone for is a gigabyte B700H there's also it's just a 700 watt power supply there's also a 750 watt version as well um, and this was 63 pounds with delivery um, now Gigabyte I have seen you know over the past you know they bundle power supplies with some of their cases that they sell and stuff but they're never really known them for power supplies and couldn't really see any reviews so I think I have took a bit of a risk um, as we know like certain companies when you see them start up and they start making power supplies they're being outsourced by someone else so then it's good to find out who's making that power supply and also most importantly is who's making the capacitors um, which I haven't been able to find out but they are on their website it does say that you know they're you know premium capacitors like they all say but um japanese capacitors but they are given a five-year warranty with it so um i'm going to get that all signed up and get that all done so at least if it's not that good um you know five-year warranty i think it would have to be good like you're not going to warranty a product for five years if you don't believe it's not going to break so i'll take you in for a closer unbox um, sorry I'm not going to show you installing the system today but if you want to see all stuff like that please go over to my channel because it is going to go in this Corsair case um, sometimes later next week I'm just waiting for a few extra bits before I can start building so let's have a closer look first let's take a look around the outside of the box and one thing I do want to say as well it's feeling pretty tight in here there's nothing shaking about um, and the box packaging does look quite nice as well um, there's enough definitely no sort of budget sort of um, look about this at all so we've got the gigabyte power supply and the front um, modular single 12 volt wearing and ball bearing must be for the fan we've got the logo 80 plus um, bronze and then we've got all the sort of bronze coloring going with it as well as you can see which goes around the side of the case and then again we've got it here um, and then on this side as well we've got the power supply um, and then we've just got some specs as well which I imagine are going to be on the back um, just basically it's a form factor which is an ATX 12 volt um, all the input currents, you know, output 700 watt. Um, quite a small power supply as well because this is only using a 120 millimeter fan. The 750 uses a 240 gigabyte. Now, there is going to be loads of space for this in my case, but um, I was more just thinking I was going to put it in my NZXT source. Which, although it's got a basement, um, there's like the hard drive case is really close to it, so sort of why I looked at it. So, here we've just got all sort of modular design, everything it's got. So, let's have a little look proper. Look at the back. So yeah, the input voltage you can have 100 volt or 240 volt. Input current is um, 10 amp, and the frequency is 47 to 63 hertz, and uh, it features active PFC. Now uh, you can see on the 12 volt rail, we have up to 54 amps as well, out to 648 watts as well. So that's very good. Um, don't know if I'm going to be running close to this, but I always like to have. Um, you sort of always want a bit of headroom in your power supply, like 150 watts, 100 watts, something like that, because when it's not running at its full capacity is when it's at its most efficient. Then we have all the cables that it comes with, plus the measurements, which is great, because I don't have to get my tape measure out and try and measure all the cables for you, so I can just read it off the back of the box. Right, should we have a look inside? I'm quite looking forward to this. 
I'm, I'm, some reason I think I, I took a risk, but for some reason I think this power supply is going to be really good, and that um, it's something that people have been missing and should be getting purchased. Well, we'll find out if it blows up in two weeks, won't we? So let's have a little look. Oh, and again, yeah, this looks really well packaged inside. So firstly, what have we got on the top here? We've got like a bag to put it in. Um, not for the power supply, this must be to put all your cables in, yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite nice, but um, I've had better sort of nice little pouches, but it's still good to put all the cables in. Definitely a nice addition with the amount of wires I've got. Then we have a manual as well. Yeah, this has all been really well. Do you know what I mean? I know I normally throw these manuals away, but even this, it's not just your crappy bit of paper. You know, it's everything in here looks like it's been done really well. Here's the power supply, which looks like it's lovely, um, tightly packaged in there to stop it from getting damaged. And nice and small as well. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So this must be all our gubbins. What have we got? We've got the standard screws to go in the back, which I've probably got about a thousand of those now. Oh, this is nice. Got some straps. Put some like Velcro straps, how many are in here? Let's have a look. Uh, four Velcro straps for your cables, so that's a nice addition as well. Then we have your standard um, kettle lead plug. This is a UK version. So that's good, that can go with the thousands of those that I've got as well. Um, and then we have all the modular cables, which I think, you wanna look at these last, Let's look at these last. Because I need the box out of the way, so I'm looking at the back, and here is the power supply. You see, this is very compact because it's only using a 120 millimeter fan. Probably for my carbide, I could have had the 140 millimeter one, um, but it was. This one's actually quite a bit cheaper to get. Like this was free delivery for 62 pounds, but the 141 was like 78 pounds and then six pound postage, so it was a little bit out of budget for. I couldn't really warranty almost 20 pounds more for 50 watts, although the extra fan and these power supplies these days run pretty cool as well. So, as we can see, nice, tiny little power supply. This is gonna be perfect in like an ITX case, something like a bit for next, um, like the Phenom sort of range and stuff like that as well, um, where you are gonna want a modular to have as minimal cables as possible. Um, and then we've just got more specs on the background there. Do you want to actually know the actual sizes? Shall I read it off the box for you? Let's have a look. It's 150 by 140 by, what's the other bit? 86, the standard height. So yeah, very compact supply. And then we've got the uh, 24 pin 80X cable. That, pops off and then you've got the 8 pin CPU as well which always splits in the bottom as well if you've got a motherboard that's only got a 4 pin and these cables are nice and long the so I can't really see it but the, uh, yeah, the 8 pin slightly longer which is good because I don't like when they come with a short 8 pin cable on it so you can, can't go around the back um, the motherboard is 550 uh, centimeters long 500 millimeters and the other one is 600 millimeters 60 centimeters long so that's what we've got there. Right, let me get all these cables out. And I'll get the box ready so I can read it off the back. So in total, we've got five cables. Now, although it did come with those nice Velcro grips, there was no cable ties, which obviously some people like to have four or five, but all of them have twist ties over them, so they're also useful. I always put those away because they come in useful for tying stuff up because you might not always want to cable tie stuff. So there's five, one, two, three, four, five cables in total. And um, I've just had a look at them. There's something I think you're going to really like about some of these cables as well. But let's first start with the PCIe cables. Now, I have two of these. Um, they've got two 8 pins on each one as well. Um, that's the main 8 pin that goes into the board. And the length of them, again, that's a 550 centimeter cable. Um, and then the spacing in between there is 150 as well. I'm a bit weird about these. I'll probably put extensions on because unless I'm using a dual thing and I've got this cable hanging about in my case sort of bugs me maybe if i can get that back to the hole on my cable tie but then they're still all flat black cables which i like so there we go and there's two of those in total now this is the thing that i've just noticed that i really actually quite like um here are the molex cables and that's where they plug in onto the uh, you've got the six pin that plugs into the uh, power supply you've got three nice long spaced molex cables and then for some reason a floppy drive on the end of it if any of you still use a floppy drive 
and for the Molex what you have is for the spacing again it's a 500 millimeter cable and again these are all 150 spacings in between as well so that's quite nice and they twist well as well because I know some people if you've got like hard drives next to each other like big bulky cables getting the twist that could be a problem so I imagine this is going to be quite nice to install and then again and then the last two cables are two SATA cables but they're slightly different so the first SATA cable has three SATA pins on the end again it's 500 millimeter sort of in between the cable to the length and then 15 centimeters in between as well so you've got three SATA plugs here and again those twists see what I mean I can get those very close together like for example my NZXT source case um, where you've got like the two hard drive bays on top of the um, not the attic why am I calling it an attic it's because of the cost on the basement like you could just plug the hard drives together like that so that's really nice that they do that twist so that's that cable with the three and then you have one that's got another two um, oh it's free as well for some reason it's on with it this on the back of the box it says there's oh no on the back of the box it says there's two but they've obviously given me the wrong cable but that's nice that's an added benefit so there's two of these the other cable is supposed to only have just two Molex is on the back, but hey ho, they've given me the better cable. So, there we go, there is the power supply in its entirety. Um, and you know, obviously, we do not know what it's like until I test it, until I start using it, doing some overclocking, adding a couple of graphics cards, and seeing how it holds up. But at the moment, for sixty, um, what three pounds with delivery from uh, that scan.co.uk, but you have to go to that eBay store because otherwise they charge you eleven quid on their website. But yeah, for sixty-three quid, um, with all of this bundled with it, with really nice cables um, and also a five-year warranty, I think this is going to be a very good power supply.